Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be answering a question that I received in my question and answer video. A viewer had asked me, when using the Internet Explorer, that application object, and you go to a website, if the website has a message box that pops up, why is it that you lose control of your macro and what can you do to bypass that? In case that doesn't make any sense the way I'm explaining it, let me just give you the demonstration. I have a macro that's currently set up. I'm going to go to my macro and hit edit. What this macro is supposed to do is go to a website. Once the website fully loads, it's simply supposed to tell me, OK, done. However, the website I'm going to is going to have a message box pop up and it's going to prevent my macro from continuing. Let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to hit the play button. The moment I go to the website, this box comes up message from web page hello i am an annoying alert box that stops your macro sure enough my macro has stopped working it's currently in a loop you can say waiting for this screen to be closed or this pop-up once it's closed then it will continue to work if i go back to my visual basic environment you know i mean number one we see it erroring out but if i was to pause it we can see that it's stuck in this loop waiting for the website to load. So what I'm going to do is just continue this. I'm going to go back to the page that we opened. I'm going to hit OK on this message box. Once I hit OK, then we can see that in Microsoft Excel it's saying OK, done. Now, this video is going to address how to close this window and how to proceed that way your macro does work and it doesn't get interrupted. I have this line of code up here that I'm going to activate right now. It's currently comment. I have it um, commented out, but I'm going to enable it. And I'm going to go ahead and um, close out the window that we created. And now I'm going to hit play again. We notice the same thing happens. The web page came up, but and the pop up came up, but the pop up automatically closed. I did not close it. It was the script that closed it for me. And now we have Microsoft Excel telling us OK, done. Again, just in case that was kind of quick, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hit play. There's a window, the box, box closes, and Excel tells us OK, done. So one thing that you that I want to explain is that VBA alone cannot close out that window. Once you're using the Internet Explorer object and you're waiting on it, the moment it gets blocked by something in this case a message box window it could be another dialogue but a message box window that's what we're working with here you won't be able to have control of the VBA environment anymore it's going to be timed or or paused the method that I use to close out the window is using a VB script and this is pretty much the command to call the VB script the W script can be used for many things this is the um, the windows Windows script object or the Windows script host object to be exact. There, this can be called from many kinds of programming languages. I mean, pretty much all of your window, any anything that you're programming Windows, you're going to be able to call this script. It doesn't matter if you're using um, your a Visual Basic script. It doesn't matter if you're using C sharp. So this is a very useful tool to use. But in this case. We're going to be using a Visual Basic script to call the Windows script host object. In that case, you'll see this over here. I have a file that already that's already created, and this is what I'm calling. So this makes the difference. Before we go to the website, we want to execute the script. And in just a bit, I'm going to show you what this code does and explain to you how you can customize it to your project. So I'm going to go to my YouTube folder. There are more, I should say, reliable ways to go about creating this kind of script. However, I try to be as frugal as possible in the environment that I'm in. In this case, when I'm at work or in a work environment, a lot of times you don't have the fancy tools provided to you, whether it be Visual Studio or some kind of a programming environment where you can create 
a sophisticated application that can handle Windows API. So in this case, I'm using VBS. A VBS file, you can create it anywhere you are within Windows. You know, you can be um, at work, you can be at home. As long as the security settings are not very strict on that machine, you should be able to create a VBS file rather easy. So I'm going to show you the VBS code. If I hit edit with, um, I, I'm using Notepad++, but um, and when we open it up, the code's rather simple. This is where you might want to pause your screen and take a look at this code. This is the code that you'll want to use in a VBS script. To create the VBS script, you just go to start, open up a notepad. And just use this code in your notepad. You do file, save as. And this is the important part. When you put save as type, select all files and just call it whatever you'd like. I'm going to call this one VB script dot. And this is the important part, the file extension dot VBS. It can't be dot VBS dot TXT. That won't work. It needs the file name needs to be ending with dot VBS. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now just give you an explanation on what the code does. All we're doing is utilizing the wscript.shell. So this can be your first line of code. We're going to have a little loop and that's going to, that's the beginning of the loop is the do. And we'll, we'll put ret is equal to w s h shell dot app activate dot message from web page. This is just the variable. The variable name can be whatever you'd like, but just so long as that this value, which is the variable, that the, these two match. When you use app activate, you're going to have an open parentheses and your double quote. This is what this is looking for is the title of the window. In this case, the title of our window is message from web page. This function returns a true or a false. False meaning that the window is not there. True meaning that the window was found. The moment that this script is opened up or that it's executed, it's going to wait and it's going to loop over and over and over until it finds the window message from web page. Once it finds it, it waits 500 milliseconds. You could extend this if you like. You can put this to 5,000 milliseconds. In this case, it would wait five seconds. But once it finds the window, it'll sleep for whatever amount of time that you you put. You can call this a, a little timeout. In this case, in this case, I'm going to keep it at 500 milliseconds. All we're going to do is pretty much use the same code that was right up here. Set that up. Set that up right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to close that window. We're going to activate it. All app activate does in this case, it's going to bring the page. It's going to bring that window to, to the top. It's only going to wait 10 milliseconds and then it's going to hit enter. Send keys, enter. All that's doing is pressing enter on the okay button so that it closes the window. I've used some other code before in the past where I close it using alt F4. We're pretty much done with the script. This part is not even necessary. We can actually remove this. I'm going to go ahead and close it and save it. But that should be uh, pretty self-explanatory on what the code is doing. Again, you may want to pause your screen and you know, copy this code. This is very useful for, again, getting rid of that message from web page pop-up. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Go back to my Visual Basic environment. So. All we need to do is call that script before we navigate to the site that has that pop-up or any time that you're going to be anticipating it. So in this case, if you're going to go to a web page, wait until it's loaded. Let's just say you have code to click a button. Before you click the button that is going to create that pop-up, you want to execute that VBS file because all the VBS file, all it's going to do is going to loop over and over and over until that window exists. So 
again, this is the part that you're going to want to add to your macro. And I'm going to show you what that VBS file can do. I'm going to go ahead and um, since we just created this one, I'm going to call the VBS script. I'm going to change this here. I'm going to move this to the top because my web page is automatically going to give me a pop up that I know is going to kill my macro. So I'm going to place, place this on top and we're going to try it out F5 or play. And there you go. There you have it. It automatically closed out that window for us. And now without using the macro, I'm going to close out my internet browsers. I'm going to open up the VBS script file directly from here. Once I hit enter, we don't notice anything. We really don't see anything going on. But right now this script is looping and waiting for that message from web page window. So if I go now to my internet browser and search that up, or I go to that website, that window's automatically closed for me. And that's because that VB script is running. So again, bottom line, this is really the only line that you need to add to your code to close out that window. Of course, create your VBS script. We go ahead and click edit. And this is what your code should look like. Again, this is the title of your web page. Um, you, you do again want to do some research on send keys. Send keys is, is, is rather simple, although it's not the most reliable method. Again, I explained the reason why I go this route is because a VBS file can pretty much be created anywhere that you have access to a Windows. I mean, you don't need to have a sophisticated program environment in order to, cr to create this or make this happen. And send keys is very well explained at the MSDN website. That way you can see other commands that you can do. Um, obviously the enter button alone may not work for you. You may need to hit tab a few times and then, you know, press the space bar to hit a button. Um, it's entirely up to you. This is just giving you a starting point on what you can do when a web page pops up a dialog box and you need to get rid of it. So hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.